Um, so we looked at one aspect of universal design, playing games in the classroom. And when we consider universal design, we look at our ends and our means. And with the ends, we want to consider where are we currently, what are the current results, and what are the desired results. And to get to the desired results, we can't just jump to the means. We also have to consider barriers. And so it would not be beneficial to say, oh, well, at the end of the semester, only 40 to 60% of the students understand the content, so let's send them to tutoring. Because we want to consider the barriers, too. So we have some quotes that kind of support the logic that we had behind moving into this kind of instruction. Um, and particularly working with developmental students, that barrier of lack of motivation is significant. Just like Monica said, just sending them to tutoring doesn't always get the engagement that we want. So we thought we would experiment with using more activities in the classroom to get them actually engaged with the math, not just doing worksheets, not just sitting and listening, but getting more engaged and actually thinking through what they're doing. So we decided to introduce the games and we figured that having that competition was going to keep the students engaged a little bit better and increase their motivation and overall I think we were looking at just increasing retention having students come to class knowing hey we're going to play a game today and my team might win so we might get some candy. <laughs> so we decided that on every non-test day because in 095 there are a significant number of tests Every non-test day, we would structure in a learning activity, some sort of game, some sort of interactive. Sometimes it was individual, sometimes it was in pairs, sometimes it was for a whole table. Um, so we decided to find activities that would match all of our learning objectives, and we scheduled them for every non-test day, which meant we created a lot of activities. And you may have seen us before class started last fall. We were in cutting up paper all the time and mm -hmm. such, getting all the activities ready. And there were some days that we actually did two activities, so that just added to it. Um, this is an example of the schedule that we gave out where we talked about these are the topics that we're going to cover. Um, uh, we were also part of another pilot with ITS where we gave quizzes every non-instructional day also, um, or every non-testing day. Um, and then with those in pink here are all the activities that we did as well as what homework was assigned so students would know ahead of time, this is the activity that we're doing. Uh, for me, after every class, I went through and wrote comments on the activities so that I knew if I'm gonna do this again, what kind of changes can I make? So I wrote down for most of them about how long they took, and then also reactions based on what I saw from the students and what the students were telling me. Like, ah, oh, I hate doing this kind of activity, or yes, I love doing the whammies. And, I really played the activities up. So my students would be sitting out in the hall and I'd be walking down and I'd be like, guess what we're doing today? And they'd look at me and be like, we're gonna do a whammy! And they'd be so excited about it and even if they weren't excited about it, they would humor me and act excited about it. <laughs> so I thought it worked out good. And there were some things that we did that, like I said here, are terrible, we're never doing it again. Um, and that was an activity that I did with my math elementary students. And I just think that the 095 students were not developmentally ready to do something like that. Um, these are comments that I had from my students. Throughout the semester, I had them do free writes on Blackboard that were not anonymous. So I knew what they were saying and who they were. And then also some of the comments were taken from my student evaluations at the end of the semester, which are anonymous. Um, overall, my students, what I could get from it, really loved the activities. They, much, they would much rather do the games that we did in class than have me hand out a packet or have them go up to the board like they typically do in an 095 class. So I copied and pasted these. These were not my <coughs> typos and poor grammar. <laughs> And then Barb had a different experience. Yes. <laughs> As always, when you try something new, it doesn't always go well. And after hearing how Monica really played it up, I was too late to do over. But if I did it over again, I would do a lot more preparing my students, 
to get excited about it. Um, part of the dynamic in my class that semester was I had some, I was on the phone with Sarah Dorr quite a bit. I had some students <laughs> who were problem students. I had a couple English language learners who really struggled with English. I had a couple very low, low skilled students. And the dynamic in the classroom was one of those nightmare years, one of those nightmare semesters. So um, I don't have all those cool comments. <laughs> <laughs> I do have to say, though, that for a number of students, it kept them engaged. And I believe it did keep them coming back um, because they were not sit at the table, paper and pencil kind of students. And the activity really kept them. One guy kept even, even with that, kept leaving the room and coming back. And he just couldn't sit still long enough to attend for two hours in the classroom. Um, yeah, and he might, <laughs> Sue was gone. Um, so if I did it again, I would um, set them up better for it and have a lot more enthusiasm. And I think I talked to a, a colleague at Baker College who teaches developmental math, and she did a lot of activities. She said she talked with them a lot about brain, how the brain works and um, brain research and that these activities are another uh, neural pathway. So she did a lot of that kind of thing to promote it. So it didn't seem like just baby games or elementary games, but really taught them that it's helping them to learn. So if I did this again, and actually I did do this again in my 98 class, I did some of the activities and scaled them differently and used them in 98, and I approached it a whole different way in the presentation. So if you do these kind of things, part of it is do a good job like Monica did of selling them on it and um, preparing them for the activities. That it's going to be something different, but there's value in it, that kind of thing. I didn't even tell them that they were learning. They just, they did it. Okay, so we're gonna start off with the whammies because those were awesome. And some of my students had even heard of the whammies game show, so that was, that was neat. Do you want um, everybody to do the same one? Because we don't have as many tables as we thought we would. Sure. Or do these two? Let's do, uh, let's do this one because I like okay. this. Oh, okay, not that one. Yes, we one. used it three different okay. times. We used it for um, order of operations with fractions, order of operations with decimals, and just plain old order of operations. <laughs> All right, so with the whammies, you guys get a game board, and you get an envelope with the game pieces. On the envelope is the directions, but we will go over the directions. Um, so the, the ones that I passed out are whole numbers, and the one that Barb passed out is fractions. Decimals. Decimals, sorry. Yeah. Um, they're all focusing on order of operations. And so what we have is the original problem along the left side and then three blanks next to that. And so what you want to do is take all of your game pieces out of the envelope and arrange them so that they're face up and you can see them all. And you're going to go through and do the order of operations. And every step that you do will be the next piece that you're putting on there. And what you're trying to avoid is the whammy. So the whammy is that very appealing answer that you think should be next, but is probably the most common wrong answer. And if you end up choosing the whammy, you can't go on from there. So I'd have students raise their hand and they're like, Mrs. Stevens, I can't go on from here. I don't know what I did wrong. I know I did this part right. And it's like, mm, if you can't go on, you got a whammy. Or we look under the table and did you drop a piece? And so the object of this is to go through and fill in every spot until you get on the right column with the final answer. Your playing pieces are in here. And you want to be able to then also identify the whammies and for each problem. So you start with this, and you need to find the next step in that order of operations. So it helps to kind of lay them out, kind of spread them out, and you can work as a team. Unless, John, do you want your own? <laughs> we can work as a team. <laughs> You're going to look for the whole, I mean, you're, it's like you're bringing everything else down. So you're looking for 19 minus 7 plus 4. Right. Yes. So it would be like, you know, when we teach, we'd say, okay, this is what you're doing first. So bring that part down, and then everything else is still going to come with us. All right. Good. We should have reviewed order of operations before we started. Yes. 
put the wrong one down? If you put the wrong one down, you can't take the next step because there won't be one. Okay, so what happens then? If you can't do the next one? What do you mean I can't do it? You mean there isn't? Did you find so 19, 19 minus 11, 11 would be 8? So if, no eight if there's no 8 here. Can you guys set this up? So, so you'll actually have to do that division. So that we'll the most yes. one of the common mistakes. With no calculator. Yes. Okay. So this would no be your whammy. There's no, there's no, correct, no cell phones there's no eight out, no calculators. Right. That's wrong. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. How much time does it take to put one of these together? A lot yeah. of time. It, it, would. Well, it, it really does. You could have a really nice so if you look at this and you can't find an eight, eight, look at this one and make sure, was eight that eight the right that step? Yeah, or should you have done something else here? Well, that was my idea. I screwed right. up. Right. No, yeah. And that's what would happen. So then hopefully you talk about, OK, what's the difference? What, what did you do to get here, and why was it not correct? So then this seven. would be your whammy. 19 minus 7 is 12. So we get extra prize for that if we get a whammy? Well, you'd have to you'd identify have to the whammy. So oh. this is the whammy that would go with that problem. And each problem will each only problem have one whammy. Each problem has one whammy. I know that one. Then there's one for there. Oh, wait. There you go. Hey, next one's really tricky. Oh, I win. <laughs> Nothing yet. You're not done yet. <laughs> <laughs> it was because she did, 20, she did 48 divided by 6. The whammy that for that one. one. We're looking yeah. for, but you lose yeah. track. Because <laughs> <laughs> you see this, found, you found the whammy. Found Which is the whammy. Yeah. 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 Okay. okay. It's right here. I was like, I know that that's right here. And then you just have a lot. Oh. There you go. So, Wayne, it was in your pile. Woo! Come on, Wayne. They got the decimals, and those are really hard. <laughs> I thought you were giving them in pairs, Monica. Wait till you see theirs. Decimals are way harder. This is two six zero nine five. Uh huh. We're not being too rigorous, are we? Two zero nine five. No, no. I think they're great. Two zero nine five. All right. So we need forty-eight. You guys like to jump some steps, don't you? No, they found the whammy already. Oh, okay. Yeah, we, we, we were on to you guys. Okay. We figured that one out. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, okay, so there's three spots here, but there could be more than three? In other words, there's, there could be like five or six of these that just fill out, or is it just... There will be only the three there. Okay. Um, oh. And some of them, especially with the fractions, we had to do two steps in one. Yeah. So yeah. they would okay. be doing it by hand, and they did give you the hard one, didn't I? There. <laughs> My bad. Oh, right. Yes. I could see. What is, and it, half the time is spent yeah. searching for the, the piece yeah. that you're looking I'm for. Trying, yeah. I'm put the final results over there here you go. And then kind of the strategy just helps. Just yeah. Right. You can jump in anywhere. All right. So now we have to go. Uh, Holy cow! You guys are doing great. It's because they have four of them. Oh, <laughs> disadvantage. It's because Wayne has his cell phone out and he's cheating on the calculator. chips at this table. Okay. <laughs> so you start out and then you have to put them in order and there will be something that's a common mistake that you'll, if you put it, you can't move any further. So that's what you're, you're looking for the three that fit and then the one that's wrong. Eight times three is 24 plus two is the 20. Six, but I'm not. We just have to. Yeah, it's kind of cool because you look at how many steps were consolidated to make it through the same yeah. thing. Yeah. Yes. And if you need to write stuff down, that's not a bad thing. 
Shouldn't. At least not on purpose. We definitely didn't set it up that way. We picked a whammy? Oh, there's something. Monica, she went through them again because there was one that was part wrong when we made it. Eight times three, six. So we have the last three here, but but it shouldn't have the three. It shouldn't have the three. Shouldn't have the three squared. Right. Okay. Monica, there is one that's wrong. This one, the three squared, isn't. We don't have it. It's not there. Get out. Yeah, it's if oh, you because I if you delete the, the yeah. All right, so that means I wonder if I threw away the wrong game board. You threw away the because I oh, printed you out made the new all ones. new game boards. Yeah. Okay. This isn't supposed yeah. to be there. Just I, the I was just thinking. I wonder if I threw away the wrong okay. game. She printed new game so boards with new game boards. She threw away the new ones. Yeah, this doesn't exist. Yes. Go ahead and cross it out. Cross it right off. Go for it. The no three squared at all. There you go. That's. Yes. There's always one. I know it. <laughs> we have a winner. Whammies are a big deal. Here's your oh, prize. Yes. Your prize. Woo! I got some downstairs. I'm sorry, I'm going to the way I Yeah. So if we're not going to make you play it till the bitter end, if you would collect up. Pardon? Yes. Yes, they all have whammies. This is cool. This is very cool. They want to finish it, I can tell. <laughs> all right, guys, we have some other really cool games, so we're going to put those away. Okay. So if you'd put Throw all those little game pieces, pieces back in the envelope. In the envelope. <coughs> we get to use the marker caps next. And we're going to be playing Connect Four slash Tic Tac Toe, depending on which game you get. Which one do we want to do? Do we want to do one per table? Um, do them in pairs. Oh, that's right. Let's do them in pairs. And, um, so do you want to explain it first? Yeah. We have three different versions here. One is, um, I can't really show it to you. Wait, there's a paper there. One is a whole game board that has little pieces laid out on it. And the question is face up. And your, your aim, you're playing against one other person. So you are going to pick anything you want. If you get the answer correct, the answer's on the back, so it's a self-check. You think like this is greatest common factor, least common multiple, all the factors, prime factorizations. If you get it correct, you get to put your piece on the board. The other person picks. If you get it wrong, the other person puts their piece on the board. Your goal is to get four in a row. So like connect four, four vertically, four horizontally, four diagonally. Um, so one of the games is with greatest common factor, least common multiple. We'll give you guys a this, break. This okay. other one is, what are those ones? Those These are ones are um, fraction operations. And so they all have story problems on them that involve fractions. <laughs> and you set them up into a four by four array. We didn't know they're actually getting a break this time because you don't have to solve the problem. All you're doing is saying, do you add, subtract, multiply, or divide? And so because we don't have a game board with this because the pieces were too big, once you, once you figure out your answer, you flip it over, see if you got it right, and then you would leave the answer face up and put your game piece on top of it if you got it right, and your partner would put, or your opponent, not partner, would put their game piece on top if you got it wrong. With these, even though it's a four by four, we don't want to connect four, we're just trying to connect three so that you have more opportunities to win. And then Barb also changed this 
the final version of this is it's a three by three array, so it's a nine grid, um, and it's a tic-tac-toe layout. And one side, you, if you put them down so that it's purple side up, you will be multiplying a mon monomial by a polynomial. When you flip it over, you'll find the right answer. And I designed this for my 98 students because then I had them reverse it. They took it from the answer and did the greatest common factor for factorization of that same, of that polynomial. So it's a, part of what I wanted to do is connect in their brain that if you are multiplying a, mo a monomial by a, bi by a binomial, then you can, fa you, the opposite of that is factoring out the monomial from the binomial. So I'm going to give you guys, or you two play this one, and I'm going to give you two this one. So put them down, purple side up. I'm Pat. Marie and Lana will do it. And then put yours out. John, did you want one of us to be your partner, or did you want to supervise? Purple side up. In a three by three grid. In how three by three? Yeah, three by three. Okay, so you take turns. One person goes first. If you get it, you mark put your marker there. Yeah. So yours is yeah a three by three grid. So lay them all out. The purple and pink. Some of them are pink. So these go on here. Yes. Yes, they were all. Yes, those are all question side up. She gets to do the first one. And you don't have nine. Yeah, because we've already set it up. Okay, so what no. do we do? So you, one person decides to go first. You multiply. So you can go first. Okay. And so you're going to pick one to do. Yeah. Yeah. And then Some you're going to try No, you're going to, if you get it right, you put your piece there. Okay. Then and then she goes, puts his and then you go again, and you're trying to do three go. in a row, a tic-tac-toe. No. Just alternate turns. You can say that. And then flip it over. Put your piece in that spot. One of your marker halves. Yep. And then I can either choose to block you or I can start somewhere else. Yes. So least common multiple of 15 and 25. No, Got it? it's my turn now. <laughs> yep. Yes, right, yes, right. And a lot of times, I'm going to say He takes five. a turn, he tries a lot to block time, you, oh. and then you try to block him. Oh. So there's strategy in addition. Oh. Um, a lot of times, then if you get it wrong, he gets to put help each other out. So like if you were paying attention to my mistake, you would have been like, no, 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 it says least common multiple, not greatest common factor. So you get to put your piece there, because I was wrong. Oh, you're so nice. And that was your turn. You can have scratch paper too. You're allowed to write stuff. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So prime factorization of 30, I'm going to block you, is going to be, let's see, 5 and 6, so 2 times 3 times 5. Does that count? Yes. Uh, let's go with factors for 35. 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70, 71, 72, 73, 74, 75, 76, 77, 78, 79, 80, 81, 82, 83, 84, 85, 86, 87, 88, 89, 90, 91, 92, 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, 100, 101, 102, 103, 104, 105, 106, 107, 108, 109, 110, 111, 112, 113, 114, 115, 116, 117, 118, 119, 120, 121, 122, 123, 124, 125, 126, 127, 128, 129, 130, 131, 132, 133, 134, 135, 136, 137, 138, 139, 140, 141, 142, 143, 144, 145, 146, 147, 148, 149, factor and least common multiple, we look at them and we circle and we cross off. So, but I let them know that you can do it either way. Um, first four multiples of seven are seven, 14, 21, and 28. So that your back side's printed in the right place on your front side. When you tell them to print it, it has to print. Instead of printing, flipping top and bottom, it flips side to side. Like when you send something to the print shop, you can either have it flip lengthwise or sidewise, widthwise, or I forget how they word it. But if you print it, 
like the paper flips this way instead of it. Yes. Yes, that's it. What was that one? One's not a prime number. Uh. <laughs> See, and I tell, I do tell my students that I grew up believing that one was a prime number, and it wasn't until I was in grad school that somebody set me straight that the definition of a prime number is exactly two prime. We use, we designed and it for so 095. I the oh, okay. I'm currently using a couple of them exactly with my 098, two the factoring and the multiplying polynomials. Yes, it is adding it is whole numbers fractions decimals proportions that's it okay. but i do teach the math and um, beginning say algebra you were to tell okay. an elementary student 097 is 095 and 096 so it goes from the basic math through beginning pre algebra sorry so they're kind of combining the two in one semester yes okay. yes students who um, depending on how they place if they're need a lot of remediation they've instead of taking it all in one semester they break it into two although many end up doing more than two because they repeat 095 right. a couple times um, all right yeah what well, would make sense i guess you don't want to go there yeah i think that i do actually <laughs> oh yes um, all the factors of 28 so yeah. one in yeah. 28 yeah. two and 14 and even in 098 because a lot of my students this semester it's their first college class and I tell them the pace is faster, it's twice as fast as what you're used to, and they're now saying, oh, <laughs> yeah, they weren't ready for the pace and they didn't keep up. So, yeah. Yeah. What class did we use them in? In 095. Yes, I, I'm using one in 098 now, but they're mostly in 095. Although if I taught 09, had a no, 097 goes so fast, it would be hard to take the time. So um, I might put a couple in yeah. strategically yeah. if I do I might, if I teach on seven again. All the factors again. of twenty one. One and twenty one, three and seven. Okay. So we're good. Ah! <laughs> okay. Oh no! Always. Thank you. Yes. There's always one. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Yes. We will. Okay. That's right. <laughs> Want some chips? Now, now should, should I start jumping? Should I start jumping? Yes. <laughs> yes. Did he win? <laughs> okay. So we have one more style of game that we want to show you that we use for several subjects. If you would put those back in the envelope. Um, and then so we can keep them organized. When when the students know that we're playing something and like I think this, um, this won't be set up for them. We no, chose to not. set it up because it takes a while to get them all out. But the students know the, the students will set it up, and then they say, "Well, I really know prime factorization, so we're going to put all of those pieces here because there's four different questions on here." So oh, I believe that prime factorization, all the factors, least common multiple. Yep, that works. That's multiple. fine. Yep. So they will group it to their advantage. This one, this one we probably did 40 minutes. Thank you. <laughs> but when you figure we're not doing problems on the board or problems out of a packet. And I spent. Yes, we'll have to put these all back together later. Right. And I spent a lot okay. less time on the teaching aspect of it. And I would show them how to do it, and then they would just kind of figure it out. And then when they had questions like, I don't know how to find no. this common multiple, then I'd go over and help them. That is um, prime factorization, all the factors, least common multiple. And um, first four multiples. Yes. And obviously, before we played these games, we did some instruction <laughs> on the topics. What, what it was. Yes. All right, so if you want to put those games out to the side, which Everybody has, except for my table. 
Our next activity is our puzzles. And we got this idea from the old 003 book that we used, and it was one of the activities. And then we expanded it to, um, we're looking at simplifying and reducing. That's what the old 003 book had done. So this is a four by four array that you're gonna make. You have 16 pieces, and each piece is gonna have fractions on it. So maybe this guy down here is four six. Then you're gonna be looking for a piece that has the simplified version of that fraction, two thirds, so that you can put it right underneath here. Any fractions that are touching need to be equivalent. So tops and bottoms, rights and lefts will be equivalent. You're making a four by four array. The top up here is not necessarily equal to the bottom down here, so it doesn't wrap around. The left side is not equal to the right side. It might be, but chances are that it's not. So we have the puzzles with simplifying and building up. We have a version of the puzzles with um, changing an improper fraction to a mixed number and then back again. And then there's another version of changing a decimal to a fraction, which we're gonna hold off on the decimal to fraction okay. one because it's really hard. Um, <laughs> but this is gonna be another game that we'll play in groups of two. Sometimes when we were doing this, like the decimal to fraction, we would have done that in a group of four. Because like I said, it's really hard and the kids have a hard time with it. So more people in a group means that hopefully at least one person knows what's going on. So, so and they, they will never be put upside down or sideways. Yes. They're always gonna be the same direction. They'll need to connect left to right as well as vertically. They have to connect horizontally. I'll give you guys equivalent fractions and you have improper mix. You guys have yep. improper fractions and you guys have, I'm sorry, you have equivalent fractions, you have improper and mixed. Yes. You have equivalent fractions and you have improper fractions mixed numbers. I'll give you guys the easy one. Equivalent fractions. <laughs> I just collected stuff and it got a mess. I'll take it no, and sorry through it later. Um, and in in the and we can put these away. In the fraction operations, there's a typo. Yarn is Y E A R N. Yeah. So, it's a word. Yarn. Oh, I bet it auto corrected. <laughs> Okay, these are the ones that I didn't put away properly. So, so let's do these. Yes. Number three. So each envelope will have instructions, the game board, and then the game pieces. Okay. And then this fraction is. operations are separate. Okay. So here's, here's the fraction operations. This is. And these go with fraction operations. Yep. And this is the one. And that's this one. one. John work by himself this time? <laughs> so where does that mean that piece has to be? In the garbage? <laughs> no. No. Four over I, I wasn't listening. I was okay. I, I'm sorry. There's I'm not going to be anything I'm to match these it. really <laughs> inattentive <laughs> students. Here. It's going to have to be on the bottom. Because it, because won't it have doesn't a match. have any it won't have a match. There's See, no equivalent fraction. Oh, yeah. Okay. 
that's all. So, so what, what we're looking for so, is... So here I would need something. I would need 23 elevenths to go right here. Oh, uh, yeah. Which is right there. Right there, but yes. Yeah, I thought I got yeah. it. Yeah, finished. But, but serious, then you don't. Seriously, and this has got to be the bottom. I didn't know what <laughs> to do. <laughs> I, I was, I panicked. <laughs> okay. So, so that is, is a key one to go with, though, and build right, off it of. Is, it is. So, so, so what are we looking for? Do we know, I mean, it just can't, it doesn't keep going up, necessarily. It. Do it's we have any sense of how... It's four by four. It is four by four. Nice so job. So we know it can go one more up. Uh, so <laughs> that would be 38 there. They there already beat you, so you don't win anything. So then you don't win anything. this may be a side, yeah, an end or not. They, they beat you. Nine they just didn't celebrate. For what, two and a quarter, right? Wow. But you're the winners of this one. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> I'm guessing that these are the end. These, these are well, the after I check it. Numbers. The 38 elevenths is going to okay. go here. Sometimes people just put pieces together because they want to win, too. Oh, my goodness. Okay. And 36 fifths, yeah. But how do you know they really match until somebody's corrected it? Here we go. You could be lying. I don't know. 80, 90 elevenths. Oh, and I win! <laughs> or 18 seventh. You guys are all right. You win cookies. Okay. So two on a. My brain hurts. Wow, you guys have a mess here. What's going on? Do we need to talk about this? Are you stuck? Yeah, that's another nine one. and three quarters. Nine <laughs> and three quarters. Nine, nine. <laughs> Did I say six and three quarters? <laughs> don't don't tell my. I know. I didn't hear that. Didn't quarters. hear that. No, no. Um, that would be twenty nine tenths. That would be twenty seven point fourths. Eight and seven. Twenty five six five fourths. Hold on, hold on. We they, are, they already won. She's see, checking look, to see if we did it right. All right, good job. <laughs> well, for a minute I thought this was six and three quarters. Sure, <laughs> what can I say? <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's no, bad is when I'm helping students and I do that, and then they put it in Alex, and Alex tells them they're wrong, and I help them do okay, so it. So what you have so far is really good. When I help a student do it, and I make an error like that, and they enter it into Alex, and it's Alex okay, says they're them, wrong, and they just like rejoice because I got it wrong now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it is hard. It is hard. But if you keep trying, you can get it. If you need to write stuff down, that's okay. Completely acceptable. I don't know. Oh, yes. Yes. That's why it looks familiar. Yep. Okay. Not crying. Uh, anger, yes. Okay, and especially when there's John's only one asking piece left a great that question. Put in somewhere, but it doesn't <laughs> fit. <laughs> yeah, then John just great. asked. John yeah, just yeah. asked, do people ever get so frustrated? Students ever get so frustrated they cry? Or, um, and yes, some of these they get really frustrated, and that was the experience I had. Like the first time I did anything, is they got so frustrated they just didn't even want to try it anymore. So it helps to be going around and helping them and and telling them they can do it and the whole coach part fits in. Because um, they can be frustrating. And so you'll notice that I had to walk around with the answer key to check because by the third time that we've played this game, they know that, hey, if I have a four by four array, it looks like I've won and they want to win. And so I have to go around and check and make sure, did you do everything right? Or like over here, if they, are halfway done, then I can come around and say, hey, everything that you have right now is right. You're doing a great job. Keep going with it. So there is a lot of encouragement going on as they're working on these. Yes. John? You said it was 16, and you thought, did you think maybe starting off with maybe four or eight and work up to 16? Yeah. Maybe to get to that, reduce the frustration. Good move. Yeah, and depending on the skill level of the class, that might be a good move to start smaller. My students would have done much better with that. Monica's <laughs> sailed through it, but if I had done a smaller array, I think I would have had more success. Yeah, yeah. And as we're doing this, for some of the really lower students, you know, I go around and I talk to them about, okay, you have 13 over 3, and you're matching that up with a mixed number. What do you know the denominator has to be? 
and what side of the square does it have to be on? So then they can start doing process of elimination and look at, okay, I know that it needs a denominator of three, and and from there, then they can look at, oh, it's four and one third. Oh, I see how that works. Because a lot of times, they're really good at doing mixed number to improper fraction, but not the other way around. And so once they see, okay, these are my options, I can go from a mixed number and see, is that the correct improper fraction that would go with it? And so we talk about these little tips and tricks that can kind of help them get ahead and so they don't feel like, oh, I don't know anything, I can't do this. Because they can, they all have ability to do something. And students varied a lot in terms of their strategy. Some students right away figured, I'm going to start here and work my way out, and others are doing piecemeal here, mm -hmm. there, and everywhere. So guiding them in strategy can be helpful so for them as well. Right Some of them That's you could. So, so you could, when you had this one 4 over 0. Yes. Yeah. Then you knew that 4 over 0 had, had to be on the bottom. Well, 4 over 0 <laughs> wasn't going to match up. We, we have. We started, and we couldn't find it. Was there anyone to find it? Um, I guess before we move on to our next activity, just to talk about how can we relate this to other classes and maybe not even just math classes. Um, with the whammies, we thought anything that's sequential, like you could do a kingdom phylum class order, family genus species type thing with it. Um, you could do um, solving an equation, the steps of solving an mm -hmm. equation if you wanted to scale it up to a higher level. Course. Balancing equations in chemistry. Um, with this, you could do it in a trig class and do uh, degrees to radians. Mm -hmm. So there, there were a lot of different extensions that, that we thought we could do this. Um, we haven't tried it in any. Well, you, you did yeah, the, in the last activity. Yeah. Fractional values of trig functions, I know some students who could answer. That's right. Exact value. Exact value. <laughs> <laughs> So, so the activities we've done thus far, <laughs> the activities we've done thus far are mostly um, practice kind of activities. They're not conceptual understanding. The next activity we want to do gets more at conceptual understanding. So we are going, if you'll collect those up. And some of you have seen this next activity already. Oh, okay. These are supposed to be. The, there was one that had the answers. Oh, I'm thinking that's, yeah. yeah. Okay, so what you're going to get is an envelope that has little slips of paper that has word problems again. We want you to categorize these. You're not solving them. Don't solve them. Categorize them. Take these and divide them into whatever categories you think they could divide into. At least two categories. Most likely more than two <laughs> categories. <laughs> Pardon? And so that's when we walk around and talk about it. That would be um, <laughs> as you guys start to read. Hard pile. All right, where's the easy pile? As you guys start to read these problems, um, you know, we talk about doing this in an elementary classroom when I do this with my math 210 students. And elementary kids are really good at knowing exactly what we want done. The higher, or I guess the, the older and more mature you are, the more you're thinking of different categories that you could do, and it's not as obvious what I'm looking for. Because all I'm telling you guys is I want you to put these story problems into groups. In groups? Into groups. groups. Categorize and them somehow. I don't know how many groups you guys want to do, but at the end, I want you to be prepared to tell me what number, what, you know, they're each numbered, what number goes to a group, and then I want you to name that group. So if you had to give that group a name, what would you call it? Yes. So it's very vague right now. <laughs> She's got it. <laughs> because Sue is teaching. Should I pull up the, pull this up so we can write the names of the group? Yes. I think that's what it's for. Oh well. I think that's the flagpole. Oh, 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 oh. There we go. That's better. What's this one for?
Do you remember this, Aaron? This is like the king of yeah. <laughs> I don't think we're playing correctly here. We have questions. How many groups? Are these your groups? We have odd numbered oh, questions and we have even numbered questions. There we go. That's two we're kinds of groups. By parody. <laughs> so let's think a little bit more about this. Yeah, right. We're, we're going to be a problem group here. So yeah. let's look at what this game is Trying called. Trying to be tactful. Oh, oh, look, there's instructions. <laughs> well, no, it's just the name of the game. So you're finding any any groups here? All subtraction to solve. Okay, they are all subtraction, subtraction problems. So you How can't just you have one group and call it the subtraction group. group. Oh no! Sorry, you need <laughs> at least two subtraction. So you got to have a. T oh, so so what kind of? Positive outcome and a negative outcome. That's d would they break down that way when you're no, looking at them? They are all positive outcomes. <laughs> Marcus. <laughs> <laughs> so. And if you look at um, the title on the envelope, conceptual method. Oh, okay. So that may give you a clue as to what we're thinking about in terms of types of groups. At least two. At least two. It will be easier if you do more than two. No? Can you break it down anymore? In terms of... Oh, I don't like this one. In terms of... In terms of perhaps types of subtraction. Keep in mind, this is a guy... What is your name? Uh, Steven. Don't be too tough on Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what? You can tell people who've taught this... You know the seven this level recently. Oh you haven't taught this level recently, John, have you? It's been, it's been two years. Okay. But, but, yeah. but I'm trying to, you know, when you say categorize things. Well, it is entertaining the categories students come up with. Are obviously not what we're looking for, but. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. That's not okay, what we're looking okay. for, but it would work. You would be doing the assignment if you did that. You're looking for mapping categories. We're looking, yeah. Yes. Don't, don't but tell me what it is. But see, I'm yes. Like, the first thing I thought of was, uh, was food. And we have people who say, these deal with people and these deal with animals, or these deal with boys and these deal with girls. And then we say, no, let's think of something a little more math related. Okay, 20 more seconds. So this is one. But that's one. Did you pick your number first? But what do we still subtract? Yeah. 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 You can't fail. <laughs> There's no failing. <laughs> The whole point of this was to get you to look at, at word problems and start thinking about something beyond just, what's the answer? What's the answer? To look at them and, and think more about it and to think about categories. We did have some ends in mind that we would like these you to understand some different ways this could be broken down, but um, just interacting with it was part of the goal. And there are times that I will let my students go with the idea that these are people, these are animals, and that's how I broke them up into the groups. But after we start writing on the board, so we would say, okay, what, did you, what numbers did you have in one group? What did you have in the other group? What did you have in the last group? Because they have three groups there. And then I'd say, what did you name each of those groups? Then some of the other students are like, oh, hold on, I'm going to change mine real quick. Because they start to think, oh, they called that the adding group. 
But then we talk about, well, it's not really adding, is it? Because all of these problems are subtraction problems. You know, so we go through, what did you call it? And then, is there a better name for it? And then we go through and we give the answers. So did, do we want to? Let's, let's start here. What right. did you come up with for your groups? We have three groups. Oh, you need your numbers? Yes. Four, eight, 10, 12, three, and six. Okay, and what did you call that group? We called that, we were given a total, we needed to find one of the pieces. Missing add-in? See, I don't think. Okay, and what's in your next group? <laughs> one, nine, eleven. And what did you call that? We were given, we were given the two pieces, we needed to find the answer. Okay, so we called that takeaway. Yes, we did. <laughs> and then the last group you had? Two, five, seven, and thirteen. And what did you call that? Comparison. Comparison. All right. Do you want me to skip you guys? We have no idea what to call. We, we, we got a little ways. Okay, what do we have? Uh, not much. No. Uh, yeah. We had uh, how many? Uh, 11, 12, and 1. 11, 12, and 1. Is how many? I would say how many. Okay. How many, how, okay. How many does she have now? How many are there now? We didn't give it a name because we didn't know what we were doing. We'll call it the how many group. And then uh, how many more? Okay. Okay, <laughs> all right. Um, Song and Brian. Did okay, so we come up with the three groups. Okay. First group has the one, four, four, eight, and one. And did you give it a name? Uh, but it's not. No. no. It okay. <laughs> group one. <laughs> group A. Oh, group one. Group one. And the second group has a three, six, five, two. Group two, I yeah. assume. And third group has a 13, 7, minus 8. All right. Nancy and Aaron, mm -hmm. you're still moving stuff. Well, because I did one thing and you could do an experiment with another way. Okay. Well, because we started to look at like the language and then Nancy would have thought that we did two groups. Mm -hmm. So and I split like, it into a. Like, are you subtracting the first number and then the second, or are you doing it the other way around? Right. Okay. The first group was called Bob, and the other one was Sue. <laughs> <laughs> so then now that the directions were clarified, we're kind of like looking again. Yeah, she's trying. <laughs> so you want me to ask Pat and Nancy? Yes. Pat and Betsy first. Oh, uh, yeah, we were kind of doing the same thing, but we ended up, I think we had four groups. Okay. I was just looking at them again. Uh, 11, 1, 4, 9, and 13. Um, 3, 10, 12, 7, and 8. 3, 10, 7, 12, and 8. 2 and 5. 2 and 5. And then 6 was kind of off on its own. Okay. Did you name your groups? Um, the one that I, I kind of went with, like, if you don't know the original starting value, that was kind of the only one. Like, you're trying to find the original amount. This one is just comparing two, two, and five. two, yeah, two and five is just a proof. So we'll call it comparing, okay. More than another, right? Um, and then the other one was you had like an original number and you know your final number, you wanted to figure out what you had to add to it to get your final total. So summarizing that in like two or three words, you would call it? Uh, Three plus x pieces. equals something. Yeah, you knew the mode and, and, and a piece. Right. Four plus x. And then what do you have in that group? Because I have three, ten, six, and eight. They had three, is that in that ten, group seven, too? twelve, and eight. Oh, the seven was different. Oh. So then we start thinking, like, well, mm -hmm. if we have some groups that kind of have similarities in them, um, that would have. So here we have a 1, an 11, and a 4. And then here's a 1 and an 11. So then we start to think, like, well, maybe 1 and 11 really should be together. Ooh, everybody had 1 and 11 together. Maybe, maybe. 
They don't have nine here, but you guys have a nine there. And oh, they have a nine there's here. There's a nine here. Yeah, we've got one nine and 11, which is pretty good, but it's really good. So you guys also had one nine and 11. And, and I think it's amazing that when elementary kids get this, they get it. They know exactly what we're looking for. So, and this was done in one of my grad level classes where the teacher had gone into an elementary classroom and done it with the kids. And they all, they were like, yes, this goes here and this goes here and this goes here. Because they look at these subtraction problems totally differently than what we look at them as. We look at them as number, number, subtract, here's the answer. And they're looking at what is the story behind it. And they're grouping them together by those stories. And so the actual grouping would be, if we want to stick with the 1911, 1911 and 4 should all be together. And if you guys actually turn your envelopes over, you'll see that this activity is called conceptual methods of subtraction. And so this has a name. Our conceptual method for 1, 4, 9, and 11 is the takeaway concept. And this is our concept where you have a total amount of something and you're taking away some and you're finding out what's left. Okay, then we have 3, 6, 8, 10, and 12 that all go together. And this is the group that our students like to call the adding group because they're looking at this plus a number equals something that else is given to you. Um, we call this the missing addend group because we don't want to call it addition. It's actually a subtraction problem. You take the two numbers you have and subtract them to find what you're missing. And so we call it the missing addend. Okay, and so then our last four, two, five, seven, and 13, all go together. And this is our comparison concept of subtraction. And this is where we're given two distinct quantities and you want to know how much more or how much less you have of them. <laughs> what is number four? The one we have. Uh, so four says, Kara has ten Beanie Babies. She gave some to Esther and now she has six. How many Beanie Babies did Kara give to Esther? We put that in the she has six at the end. So what did we take away? That's why we put it. All right, so, so we hit four o'clock. <laughs> Any questions that you want to? <laughs> we have more. So all yeah. the activities that we did today are on the shared drive, or if you don't have access to our shared drive, we can give them to you on a flash drive if you brought that, or we can email them to you. Um, and we actually have more activities on there that we did, but knew we wouldn't have time to talk about. Um, I can sub for you, actually. <laughs> you can sub for him. <laughs> All right, well, thanks okay. for coming. Thanks for coming.